Osiris, the first resurrected Christ. The correlation between the myth of Osiris and the story of the Christ have been illustrated by many prominent historians who have shown that the evolution of Christianity is rooted in the religion of Isis, Horus, and Osiris. This religion survived in its last outpost in Nubia until the temple at Philae was destroyed by Justinian in the 6th century AD. Although there are many versions, the essential theme of the Osirian legend states that Osiris was once king of Egypt. He came to an untimely death at the hand of his brother Set, who had the parts of the dismembered body of Osiris hidden in various locations all over Egypt. Isis, wife and sister of Osiris, found all the parts and was able to reconstruct the body with the exception of the penis, which was thrown in the Nile and eaten by fish. Her lamentations were heard by Ra, who sent his fourth son Anubis to wrap the body with bandages and perform all rites due one of his stature. Isis caused the breath of life to enter into the body by the rapid beating of her wings, whereupon Osiris was resurrected and became the king of the other world. While hovering over the body, she became pregnant and later conceived a son, Horus, who would avenge his father's death. Henceforth, all the dead of Egypt were considered Osiris, wrapped in the bandages of the familiar mummy with the hope of resurrection in the spirit world of the Anget, the land of life. If the Egyptians seem to be preoccupied with the dead, it is from a belief that life on earth was merely a preparation for an eternal life. The proof of this could be demonstrated by the Ankh, which, become, which became the symbol of life because of its ability to detect the energies of that realm. Further proof that life on earth was preparation for another life is the manner in which we dream. Dreams are our fledgling entrance into the spirit world while we are still alive. Our earliest attempt at spiritual flight are short. While dreaming, the penis is usually erect the phallus of Osiris is unnecessarily, and the body is kept rigid by powerful chemical secretions from the brain, which prevent it from acting out the experience. During those brief seconds, we are as if dead, yet alive in the other world. The days of our years are threescore years, and reason of strength they be fourscore years, Yet I labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Psalm 90 and 10 According to Gerald Massey's book, Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, Osiris is the Corpus Christi. The word, Christ, the word Christ comes from the Greek word Christos, which means anointed. In Egypt, K-R-S-T means to embalm, to not, to make the mummy. Central in Christian theology is the resurrection of Christ from the dead. This concept has an undying appeal for the masses of humanity from the dawn of the human experience. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. John 10 and 10 Acceptance of the Egyptian definition of KRST could put the confusion within Christianity the rest, for Christianity did not start with the Jews, but was of Egyptian origin, revolving around mummification and the spiritual resurrection of the dead. The followers of Jesus, after his supposed death and resurrection, 
were only later called Christians because their beliefs were similar in nature to what was practiced in Egypt for thousands of years. Unfortunately, the misinterpretation of this mystical gospel would ultimately inspire the outrageous behavior of ingesting the flesh of mummies, Christ, Christ, in hope of attaining immortality. This felonious religion let loose among a canine race already predisposed to cannibalism found easy acceptance in a God who offered his flesh and blood as a means of salvation. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To them that thirst, I will give water without price from the fountain of the water of life. Revelation 21 and 6. In the original myth, Horus lost an eye in his victorious battle against Set. After his wound was healed by Thoth, he gave the eye to Osiris to eat, which vivified and strengthened him. The eyes of Horus are the sun and moon. Our sun is living water made mostly of hydrogen that has not suffered the death of oxidation. These Greek letters, Alpha and Omega, have come to represent Christ. Wow, that's deep. <laughs> okay. There is much evidence to conclude that life energy may be harnessed to prolong the life of the living. Our ancestors took full advantage of this holistic science allowing some to live hundreds of years. This technology predates the early dynastic period in a time when the earth, according to the Egyptian, was inhabited by demigods and kings. Obviously, the ancients had different priorities. The accumulation of wealth was superseded by a desire for wisdom and life. The mythological story of the creation of man recorded in Genesis was taken from the original Egyptian story of the creator god Kunin, who formed man and his ka on a potter's wheel. The hieroglyphic symbol which represents Kunin consists, consists of a tet between the raised arms of the ka symbol and the word Om, which means light tower, another name for the God Am Amen. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. A likeness of his light is a pillar on which is a lamp. The lamp is a glass. The glass is as it were a bright shining star lit from a blessed olive tree, neither eastern nor western. The oil whereof give it light, though fire touch it not. Light upon light, Allah guides to his light whom he pleases. Surah 24:35. The Tet is the orthodox illustration of a tree and according to Gerald Massey, it represents the eternal life after death. The Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden away to the east, and in it he put the man he made. The Lord God made trees to grow up from the ground, every kind of tree, pleasing to the eye and good for food. And in the middle of the garden he set the tree of life, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 2, 7 through 9. Notice that the tree of life was not planted, but set in the middle of the garden. After Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, they became knowledgeable. The man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. 
What if he now stretch forth his hand and takes the fruit of the tree of life also and eats it and live forever? So the Lord God banished him from the garden to till the ground from which he has been taken. Genesis 3.22 The tree of life was no ordinary tree. She replied, We may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, but the tree in the middle of the garden we may not eat or even touch it lest we die. Genesis 3 and 2 The Tet is a high voltage power source. Touching it may have been lethal to those without knowledge. Adam, who now possessed knowledge, knew that the Ankh portion of the tree was a high frequency source that could be handled safely. Tet, fruit tree, danger, do not touch. Now we have come full circle and in our midst is the tree of good and evil, the modern computer and the tree of life, which is the Ankh science of our spiritual nature. The moral question faces our generation whether to trust Satan's path or the path which leads to eternal life as God's. For it is not simply a question of a machine, but the programming of falsified information aimed at seducing you from your divine nature. Who said you were ignorant, for you were created clad in divine wisdom and light? The Depiction above shows Ra, sun god, and his etheric double, Amun-Ra, the hidden force behind the sun. Our sun has a surface temperature of 6,000 degrees, yet its corona, spirit or aura, exceeds 2 million degrees. The difference in temperature is caused by laser-like effects produced by the strong electric and magnetic fields within ionized gases over the highly reflective surface of the sun. King Tut is also depicted with his etheric double and like Ra, his name Tutankhamun expresses the hidden source of life. All living systems have electromagnetic phantoms. The phantom of atoms and molecules are called photons. They are the essence of nuclear life governing the energy states of the material world. The Ankh is held to the nose area because of its sensitivity to electromagnetic waves. The area between the fifth and sixth chakra is centered around the nasal cavity where a massive quantity of neuroreceptors responsible for the sense of smell are exposed to the environment. The sensations are often confused with sound because of their proximity to the ears, sounding like the noise you hear from a TV set tuned to an unused channel or like the sound of the ocean. Sensitivity can be increased and with practice, one can detect the presence of high frequency waves close by. Some highly spiritual people are so sensitive to these waves that their neurons can demodulate radio broadcasts, causing them to hear voices. Many end up in psychiatric wards because they hear voices others can't. The gods, who are spiritual race of photonic beings, made man in their own image and likeness to serve them on earth. However, man became aware of his own divinity and sought to be like the gods while in the flesh. The story of Genesis also relates the longevity of Adam and his sons, whose average lifespan was 900 years. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh, but his days shall be a hundred and twenty. Genesis 6 and 3 So it is the spirit, phototonic, photonic or electromagnetic energy, which gives man the ability to live an extended lifespan. A tree deprived of an important nutrient like sunlight 
or water would wither and die in a shorter time. Without this vital ingredient, we grow old and die prematurely. The first signs of aging are apparent in the skin and is related to some melanin dysfunction. There is an increase in yellow pigment and among Caucasians there is premature wrinkling and melanoma. If the resonant frequency of melanin was known, the appropriate energy could be absorbed to vitalize the skin and delay aging. Electromagnetic radiation may cause cancer among whites because non-pigmented skin has no defense against the high frequency wave which penetrates deeply in human tissue. A drawing of the world's first electronic clock built by Nile Valley Africans to represent their ancestral spirit Tet Ankara, the Anki, Kunu, Kronos. The glowing globe was slowly rotated by the precise electromechanical movements of the arm. The tree of life provided sufficient power for the creation of electromagnetic radiation, angelic or spiritual beings, and the rotation of the world. The Egyptians not only knew the world was round, they knew the force which turned it was a perpendicular electric and magnetic field. They used elements of electronic circuitry to represent the spiritual nature of life. The circuit on the right of the tree is a relaxation oscillator, charging and discharging through the spark gap to provide excitation for the loop circuit in the figure below. A minimum of 300 volts is required to produce a spark across the gap. The relaxation oscillator is an inefficient method of excitation because the discharge cannot be synchronized. However, with the use of COM, Galena, a more effective continuous wave excitation oscillator can be made that requires significantly lower voltage. The loop and plates above are also a tank circuit which is shunted across the gap and capacitatively coupled to the input resonant circuit. The transmitter radiates UHF power to unks of comparable size within the vicinity. The spark was considered to be an indication of God's presence because within a spark all frequencies are generated. Therefore, all circuits are compelled to respond. The large capacitance of the shrine or arc could provide powerful sparks of lightning sufficient to excite an onk into oscillation, especially when this discharge was through the gap of a transmitting onk circuit. A circuit consisting of a loop and plates could also provide lighting at night or in the darkness of the tomb. It has always been a mystery as to what method of lighting was used to allow those intricate paintings to be produced on the walls of some of those tombs. No soot was found on the ceiling suggesting that some other method besides the torch was used. Again, we are asked to believe it was done with mirrors reflecting sunlight because the truth of electric lighting in tombs would suggest widespread use similar to our modern use, but superior because power would be wirelessly transmitted. <clears throat> the pectoral of King Sinusret II embodies the spiritual and scientific principles governing the universe. The Ankhs illustrated have coils on either side of the loop, and Heru, Falcon, is standing on the sunk, a divine light. When this type of ankh was constructed and attached to a battery, 
It operated like a motor and produced high voltage spikes at audible frequencies. The coils on both sides of the loop form an electromagnetic switch, which switches on and off under the influence of magnetic attraction and the flexibility of the loop. The high voltage produced is a result of the sudden interruption of current flow through the coil. This by itself did not seem strange. For on closer examination of the output, it was discovered that the output power exceeded the input power. With the use of rectifiers and rechargeable batteries, the excess power kept the onk in a state of perpetual motion. The latent energy within the magnetic field was harnessed to produce electricity. The kneeling figure in the center of the pectoral is He, the god of eternity, holding the notched chain of infinity. This type of onk was undoubtedly the power transmitter for the loop circuit of the sink. Sink, S-N-K. To see the light, SNK, light rays, SNK, night or darkness. Note the sink is upside down over the symbol for sky. SEN, sink or sink. Sink means similar, dual, two, or alike. Similar to, the, to today's fluorescent lamp. The sink was used extensively before the numerous invasions put this light of Egypt out forever. Since there are no known surviving examples of the sink, its basic operation can only be extrapolated from fluorescent light theory and examples depicted in Egyptian art. The primary elements of the sink's construction are 1 partially evacuated glass tube, two, coil or loop, inductance, three, plates, capacitor, four, DC voltage. A partially evacuated glass tube can be made to glow when placed within a rapidly changing electrostatic field. The air in the tube is ionized by the presence of high frequency oscillation in the coil and plates at 10 to 50 megahertz. The ionized gas in the tube becomes conducting and establishes direct current flow from the battery through the tube, further increasing the intensity and duration of the glow. The ionized gas tube of the sink can be adapted for use as a diode, a rectifier, or as an active device by exploiting its negative resistance for amplification. By adding an extra set of plates to the isolate to isolate the DC voltage, the sink could easily be modified to produce continuous wave oscillation. However, since the Egyptians had knowledge of Galena, it is likely that the vacuum tube was abandoned in favor of more efficient semiconductor technology. If all the components of modern radio transmission and reception were known and used in Kemet 4,000 years before their reemergence in this century, then the super technology of the UFOs need not have come from other planets but could have been developed right here on Earth? These are the questions which will arise to disturb the status quo if knowledge of the Ankh science is made public. It would necessitate a complete re-examination of Kemetic religion to explain the connection between the African and these electromagnetic circuits which were of such high spiritual significance. This would provide a direction for the research into what we truly are as a people. The atmosphere is a rarefied ocean inhabited by numerous spiritual entities living in realms which vary in activity levels between night 
and day or during cloudy weather conditions which causes the spirit spirits to take on a higher density the electronic circuitry of the Egyptians was used to facilitate greater contact with the spirit world known as the kingdom of heaven the lords of this kingdom are called the greys and many consider them negative aliens because of the fear they arouse and their enigmatic behavior the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom